Today, I want to take a closer look at two semiconductor companies. The first one is obviously one of my favorites, NVIDIA. We're going to take a closer look at some new regulation rules that the company announced during their 10Q report. Um, the second company I want to take a closer look at is ASML, uh, another company that's actually being impacted by regulations as well. And there have been some few announcements that came out today. Uh, so let's jump right into it in today's episode. So let's just t uh, take a closer look at stock price right now. Year to date, Nvidia is up 244 uh, percent. The stock is up, uh, sitting at 493 dollars. What I want to talk about today is there. There have been a lot of reports that brought this to my attention um, that. During NVIDIA's 10Q report, which they released on August 28th, they did announce that during um, the most recent quarter, which was the, during the second quarter of fiscal year of 2024, the United States government informed NVIDIA of an additional licensing requirement for a subset of A100 and H100 products destined to certain customers and other regions, including some countries in the Middle East. Uh, so this is pretty interesting, right? Because we've kind of seen these regulations of the A100 and the H100 in two main places, China and Russia. And now they're saying that they are expanding that a little bit more. Um, to kind of combat this, uh, NVIDIA has sold uh, other products like the A800 and the H800. And I do believe that's going to be the similar case to some of those other countries that NVIDIA has informed. I do want to say one thing that really grab my attention is i don't believe the company mentioned this during the earnings call if they did i must have on I, I must have kind of bypassed it um but i'm it, i i wonder if this is so new that they no because they mentioned during the second quarter of fiscal year so i want to say right off the bat i do not like that they didn't share this during the earnings call even though um, I, I want to say these pro these countries that they probably have these kind of um, exclusions to uh, in, in the Middle East are probably minuscule to no kind of revenue to them um, whatsoever. I still would have liked to heard from them that, hey, look, this is what's happening right now. And this is what you should know. Um, I, I kind of wanted to just confirm that, right, to make sure that, hey, look, the, uh, these countries don't really pay make a big portion of this company's total revenue. And here we can see in July 30th of 2023. Uh, NVIDIA breaks down their segments into four markets. Out of that $13.5 billion, roughly 40% comes from the United States. $6 billion comes there. Uh, Taiwan comes in at second place with $2.8 billion. China comes in at third place with $2.7 billion. And then other countries come in at fourth place with $1.8 billion. Remember, the uh, other countries are all the European countries, all the Latin American countries, all African countries, everything else, right? So in my opinion, the Middle East is probably such, such a small portion of the pie that NVIDIA didn't really kind of have to bring this up. Like I mentioned, because of those numbers, I don't really think they're hiding something, but I really wish that they would have kind of told us a little bit about these regulations during the earnings call. Again, I, I listened through the earnings call. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't read it during the transcript. Or so I just want to say I wish they would have known uh, or I wish they would have told us during the earnings call. Uh, let me know in the comments, guys. What are your thoughts on that? Do you guys think I'm being a little bit paranoid at the moment? Uh, talking about paranoia, um, there have been some reports that NVIDIA is kind of fluxing, uh, playing some kind of numbers uh, with BlackRock and, and some other kind of companies that they have invested in. Um, I actually did a video on that and it's coming up in my semiconductor podcast. If you have haven't subscribed to my semiconductor podcast make sure to check that out the link should be down below and the video should be coming out either today and tomorrow now the this kind of regulation, back to these regulations here of certain products into the Middle East, um, things are getting a little bit interesting because I do believe yesterday is when we started to see a lot of reports of people finding out um, that the Middle East, certain countries in the Middle East were getting impacted by regulations. And the reason that this gets a little bit tricky is there are reports today that the United States is denying blocking chip sales to the Middle East. Uh, so I, I, I find this pretty interesting, right, that the um, the companies that are actually selling to the Middle East, like a video saying that, hey, look, we have some regulation um, to export controls that we're kind of facing in certain countries. And then you have the United States government, the people that are supposed to be um, in charge of this saying that, hey, look, we have not blocked any chip sales.
sales to the Middle East at the moment. So I want to say this is pretty interesting and it's definitely pretty crazy at the end of the day in forms of financial uh, financial revenue. I have no, no kind of worries for NVIDIA, right? Um NVIDIA, in their most recent earnings, I, one thing I do remember, they mentioned that, hey, look, if in the short term you kind of caught off China, which is 25% of our revenue, we still would not see any, any short-term um, pain in our financials results because of the vast demand that we have for our, our AI chips. Uh, so if they say that for China, I could really care less of what, uh, some of these countries that are probably single-digit revenue for them. Uh, so that's the first company I wanted to take a closer look at, kind of staying here in the regulations. I want to take a closer look at ASML. But before we go there, guys, we just hit 27.7. Uh, I want to hit 30,000 by the end of the year. So if you can, make sure to hit the subscribe. I want to say thank you guys for the support. If you guys want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I do have weekly videos on a membership program. Just click join to learn more. I just did a deep dive on Marvell. Next, if you want a special offer for the fool.com, check out fool.com slash Jose. If you want a free newsletter, check out josenaharo.substack.com. And I actually just created a brand new website where I'm just posting amazing semiconductor content. Check out semiconductorwatch.com for all the semiconductor news that you need. Uh, in the past few days, I've already talked about AMD, about Google, about NVIDIA. Uh, so make sure to check out those articles. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy it. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Uh, now, kind of coming back here to ASML, just a quick look at stock price. ASML right now is down roughly 1%. Year to date, the stock is up roughly 20%, right? It's not killing the market like some of the other semiconductor companies like NVIDIA, maybe like AMD, but it's definitely doing fairly well. Well, for those that are not familiar, Familiar, ASML back in June did get some more restrictions on some of their deep ultraviolet machines. Uh, ASML produces kind of two machines needed for uh, two main products. They sell uh, deep ultraviolet and extreme ultraviolet. In forms of regulations, extreme ultraviolet was never ha have never been sold in China, right? So um, they're kind of lower tier. The deep ultraviolet have been sold to China and continue to be sell. Well, there have been new regulations that like the top tier of deep ultraviolet, so the most most advanced deep ultraviolets need to go through some regulations now um, to kind of be sold to countries like China. And that's why in their most recent earnings, we did see ASML kind of see a huge, huge bulk of orders coming in from China as all these countries, all, all, all these companies in China are, are trying to kind of stack up on, on equipment before kind of these regulations um, take effect. Uh, so ASML did announce to that they're able to ship top uh, chip tools to Chinese customers until the year end. Um, so like I mentioned, semiconductor equipment maker ASML on Thursday confirmed Chinese media reports that it had received licenses from the Dutch government to export some of its advanced tools to customers in China up to the end of the year. Like I mentioned, the company is required to seek approval to export some of its most sophisticated technology Again, this is on the deep ultraviolet, not in the extreme ultraviolet, um, was introduced in June under an agreement with the United States. Um, one of those products was going to be the NXT 2000i and more advanced DUVs, um, which fell on restrictions as of September 1st for the remainder of 2023. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. I do want to say in the upcoming earnings, we're probably going to see a, uh, ASML be a little bit more focused in the Chinese market because that's going to be a market that might get hit in the future. So they're really going to kind of fill up those orders first and then just kind of build up a backlog on certain other countries uh, because once those kind of export regulations go in full effect, then they'll be able to, hey, look, we, we, we told you guys to wait a few quarters um, outside of China because we had to send to them first. Uh, so I, I do believe in the upcoming earnings, we're going to see a little bit more exposure to China as ASML just really focuses on that market first. First. Um, I actually also have one more NVIDIA news, and this is dealing with AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, so we all know NVIDIA is coming out with their server CPU. Um, there was there is an event going hap happening right now, Hot Chips, where we talk, uh, not we, where the overall industry talks about advanced semiconductor solutions. Um, and uh, during that kind of meeting or during this kind of trade show, uh, 
NVIDIA has showcased that they are kind of a nice leader in the CPU. They mentioned that NVIDIA Gray CPU delivers 2x throughput at the same power. That's the kind of caveat there at the same power. Um, and this is compared to Intel Sapphire Rapids and AMD Genoa. And I do believe it's not like the Genoa X. It's just a, a vanilla Genoa. And I think it's just a vanilla Sapphire Rapid. Uh, so obviously take these take these numbers with a grain of salt. Everybody always looks at special numbers. They also always look at special software that are optimized for their CPU. Uh, so here, NVIDIA on server performance, we can see that they're kind of pretty much on par with Genoa and kind of beating Intel Sapphire Rapids in most workloads. Um, the only one that uh, AMD's, uh, that NVIDIA's great CPU really dominates is in graph analytics. Um, but I, 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 right off the bat, what I do want to say on server performance, which seems to to not be any power limitations. They are on par on these workloads, on certain workloads, with AMD Genoa Vanilla. And I think that's very, very impressive. Um, and it's just, this is their first generation of CPU. So I would be super excited to see how they continue to advance here. Uh, so right off the bat, I'm super bullish on NVIDIA's CPU product. Again, I would take these kind of results with a grain of salt because they're probably only focusing on certain applications and certain workloads. And like we saw on certain power throughput, um, which obviously can, can flux around with the number Numbers, but at the end of the day, at least we see some decent, decent numbers compared to AMD Genoa and Intel Sapphire Rapids. Uh, so I think that's all I have for you guys today. We wanted to take, we took a closer look at NVIDIA export regulation laws, um, same with ASML, and we took a closer look at NVIDIA and their CPU product. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.